Hey everybody, hope you can hear me over the air pump. I'm gonna close the air pump doors real quick and the sump pump because I am done with the new internet of aquaponics sump pump, or not sump pump, but sump tank alarm. I'm gonna kind of sit back here so sump tank's a little quiet, but here's the final version. Here's the node MCO, MCU uh, board. I'm drawing a blank there. Um, all I did is I put in a terminal connector here for the, the switch wires and they're soldered. It's not a pretty job, but it works. I figured I don't want to go too much into it. Being this is so simple, just monitoring a pair of contacts. I got the battery charger right there. I went and found a battery at Fry's. <coughs> it's a 3300. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Um, 3500, if you can see it there, 3500 milliamp hour battery. And when I ran the test, it lasted for over 20 hours on battery alone. So that should be enough to get us through cloudy times, I hope, because it's cloudy today and night times. So I got all that packed in there. I put a little hot glue over some of the terminals to protect them. Over here from the battery charger, I have a power plug, which is going to take my solar panel hopefully it'll be enough to reach I can put the solar panel right there run the cord in here or maybe back there and that's all there is to it so um, like I said real simple I drill a hole here for the sensor switch wire to come into I'll probably put a dab of silicone on there keep it a little watertight because this does condense um, at times so there will be some drippage of water but otherwise the um, will be seal tight box Still got the same switch in there I had before. I even used the same wire, I just cut it off from the alarm. So here's what it looks like on my iPad so far. And you'll see I have two new ones here. I've started the project of a new board, which I'll take you inside to show, that has uh, temperature sensors. One's gonna be for the water or the tank, and one's gonna be the air temperature. And I'm probably gonna try, I need to keep it within six feet unless I go buy a nine foot power core, because this one's gonna be powered, not by battery, but hard powered by a bat, uh, phone charger. I could probably put it here, um, whoop, here, because the uh, cords for the temperature sensors are long enough, because I'm probably gonna take the sensor readings in here or in here. So if I go with a 10 foot power cord, I can probably get it amount here. Or even maybe just mount it up here because I'm going to put a um, LCD in it so I can get a quick glance look at the uh, temperature region readings. And I did get a pH probe today and I'm playing with that. It seems to be working well, but I'm doing it separately right now and I got to add it, see if I can add it to the same chip that the uh, temperatures are at. Let me show you real quick. So yeah, I have two chips now. Oh, that one's offline. Yeah, because I'm playing with the pH right now. So those temperatures are bogus. It's offline right now. But there's two chips there. And hopefully I can be able to put the pH on this chip. And then I'll have another chip for the water level over in the tanks. So let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to hold up. I'm going to pull this switch to simulate that the water is drained out of here. And let's, let's see what happens here. It does take a time because I have that delay. But there we go. We got the alarm notification, and then we got the, the LED is in red, meaning it's an alarm. I'll put the switch back down, hit OK. And now the switch is back down, and in a few seconds this will go back to green. And that's something else that I, you notice, I took out the number for power. It's still there, it's the number. And I put a graph here, a bar, so as it starts to go down, it will change. See? went to green switch is fine when it gets to green or gets down a little lower it'll go to orange and then it gets down real low it'll turn to red and that means uh you know, hopefully it doesn't turn red during the night but just give me an indication when it's on battery power i'll start to i'll see this number drop and this graph drop and hopefully i didn't test it yet on solar charging with that big battery but it should do fine when i chart when i put in the uh five volt five volt USB directly into the battery charger here 
they charge the battery while operating everything and this is a five volt cell um, so hopefully the current's enough to run everything so all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and seal this up tuck it away under here and plug in the solar panel and uh, hopefully that will be it and I'll take you inside now and I'll show you what I've done so far with the temperature and with um, the pH probe so see you a few minutes inside hey everybody um, let me let the cat out real quick go out yeah, right when I start the video anyway this is part two of uh, the video on the sensors in fact been a couple days since clip one but um, I actually recorded it the same day but I didn't like it and so I'm gonna do a new one and I have a little more to show you I have two sensors to show you so the first one and I forgot to check the front door but I think some of the, my enclosures are here this is the looks really busy compared to the last one but um, there's the node MCU Let's see if I can turn it this way there's the node MCU and that's the Wi-Fi module and what I have here attached to the bottom are two of the temperature switches I think I showed you in another video. One's going to go in the fish tank and the other one's going to go um, outside in the air because this, this will be enclosed. And um, they, o they operate on a single wire bus called one wire. So that's kind of cool. I can add more one wire sensors if I wanted to. And then up here, this little blue thing here, is a humidity and temperature sensor in itself. And it's wired up to another pin on the mode, on, on the mo module. What do I call it, mode? No, we'll just call it node. So, and this is going to be inside the case, and so I don't know how well that's going to work. Um, it's a waterproof case because it will be outside. Um, so I, I think, I don't know if the humidity... Inside the case is going to be different than outside. I would assume it probably be a little bit different. And the temperature, the reason why I'm keeping these two probes, one go outside, this temperature will be inside the case. Um, I don't know why. I wasn't going to use it at all, but it will tell me if the inside of the case is going to get too hot. Maybe I can put a, if I need to, I can put a little fan on there on the bottom or something so rain doesn't go up inside. That's an idea. And then the humidity will still come up inside. And, um, yeah, so this, this will turn on the fan if it gets too hot inside. That's a, a thought. The other sensor I have here, um, it's just connected here by uh, pins, is it goes to this BNC and to a little board here. And what that does is it is for my uh, pH. And where is it at? This is the pH probe I got. It's a, I want I want to say cheap, but it was fifty six dollars. It's a little bit higher end of the cheaper ones, but it's still from China. Nothing against China, but it was a pain in the butt to try to calibrate, and I hope it stays calibrated. But it did float a little bit. Um, hopefully, it'll be okay. I might end up choking down the the vial there and get the. Uh, more industrial professional probe by Atlas, um, not the Coyote Atlas, but um, Atlas Industrial, I think it's called. They make a really industrial um, probe that can can stay in the water indefinitely. I don't know how this one will do staying in the water for long periods of time. So I might buy that probe. It's like seventy-five dollars by itself, and use this interface. And if I still have in problems, I'll replace this interface with Atlas's interface, which is another $40, plus I have to get a BNC for it, because it doesn't come with the BNC. So that's probably another $10. Bucks. So it's probably $50 bucks, um, altogether. So with the, their probe, it's $125, $130. Bucks. So I'm trying to avoid that right now. So this is a little test. So all that's going into here. Do I have my phone here? I was going to show you on my iPad, like my last video. It's not powered up right now, so it won't show you. Um, but there's what it'll be. It'll be inside, outside temperature, tank temperature, pH value, and humidity, humidity value. 
I'll show you this one down here in a minute. So I'm getting ready to wire this up. And I'm almost tempted to just leave it on the uh, breadboard. That would be a lot easier. And I may just do that. You know, the breadboard has sticky back tape. And I can just put it in there. And then this will be, uh, oh, you know what? This did not come, I'll have to check. I don't think this came with the uh, a nut so I can drill and put that in the case. And then I got, um, no, I got like these. I bought these at Home Depot. They're actually too big. So I bought some from Amazon. They'll be here tomorrow, a little bit smaller, but so I can pass the probe wires through and then it clamps down on the probe wires to keep, uh, as I say, moisture out of the case. But with, uh, if I put a fan in there, that's going to be beside the point, but it'll be facing down. So it'll keep rain out. So I'm ready to do that. I also got an LCD module. It's a four line, 20 character. It's probably here today, so I should probably go grab it. But it operates off a two wire bus, which, um, hmm. Okay, yeah, it will come up off the top part here, pins uh, two and three. And that, that way I can program the LCD to show the temperatures and the pH and humidity so I can see it on a uh, on a glance out there. But the way I'm going to do it is I'm probably going to do that. I'll wait for the Sounds of Freedom to go by. Yeah, we're near a uh, Marine Air Base up over the hill. But they don't usually, that's not probably the Sounds of Freedom. That's probably the airport from the other direction. A jet coming because we don't have any jets coming from the Marine Air Base. Just the uh, Ospreys and the helicopters. Anyway, I got a separate case for the LCD, a clear cover case, so I can plug that in down the road. Um, so I really want to get the temperatures out there and running. So I can play with the LCD, make sure I have it running, and then I can flash the code to this down the road and plug it in. I'll probably have the same, I'll probably have wires come out of one of those one of these little doohickeys at the bottom and have, this, have it going in one of the doohickeys on the uh, clear case for the LCD. So the next time you see this, you'll see the finished product. And the next one I'm working on, it's pretty simple. It's kind of like the uh, sump alarm, which is running already. But it's the ultrasonic one I've been showing you, and i got to wiggle that a little bit. What I did, there's the ultrasonics, and what it looks like out of the case is like that. And what I did is I drilled holes and I hot glued it in place to what I thought. It looks like I didn't get it quite right. I'll push it a little bit more. I wanted to hot glue it in place and then I'm going to put silicone around it so it's um, sealed there. Because I'm going to have a module here in the case as well and I was gonna have that run by batteries and solar power but in testing I came up with two things. I even went and bought a, a second solar panel because and if you watched my last battery you saw that or my last battery last video you saw that the sump alarm I hardwired the power to it because we're having May gray right now and we're going to have June gloom where it's partly cloudy to all cloudy in the early mornings and late afternoon. So we're not getting a full day of full sun. And so it just wasn't, the one solar panel wasn't enough, the power to get that battery up full each day. So eventually it just ran out of power. So I went and bought a second, um, solar panel, panel, put them in parallel, so I should get 400 milliamps now, and it's outside with a test to see how long it takes to charge. And it's going on a little over two hours right now. It started off with a good sun, but now we're in the uh, partially cloudy, partially sunny, and we'll see. But 
The other problem is it's a 3.7 volt battery. Doing this test, it's plugged into the, U, uh, the USB port for programming and power. And I have it plugged in to the VCC pin, which has given me 5 volts of power to this module. And I should probably show you what it's doing. Like right now it's pointing at the wall. I have the it programmed in reversed distance and in inches. So as it gets closer to the wall, that represents more water in the tank. You know, so because the distance between the module and the water is less and less, and you can see the bar graph going up. So as it gets more distance, it means less water in the tank, and I have it set at a certain point, whoops, there was my screen, that it will go orange, meaning uh, warning, warning, and then I even have a point where it gets red, where I only have, uh, I have less than 10 inches of water in there, which is a lot of, I mean, 10 inches is probably maybe 100 something gallons. I haven't done that figure yet. But the problem is, back to the problem, is let me change the pins. If I'm putting the battery power in here, I usually put it into the VCC. That way, if it's over three volts, and, and I don't have a USB connector for it anyway, um, that's the input for the voltage. So if I put this red wire over on three volts output, uh, you're not going to be able to see it. It basically doesn't operate anymore. It, 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 um, if, you see this, if you saw the serial port, it's just putting out zero inches, which means in here is a full tank. So it needs at least five volts to operate. I'm gonna put it back on the VCC pin. So I put it back on the VCC pin. It's operating properly now. So I have to hardware wire power or get a five volt battery, which that might charge because that's a uh, five volt solar panels. So I'm probably gonna have to run a few more tests or I have to somehow run five volt power from my uh, powerhouse to this module, which I really didn't wanna do. You know, if I'm gonna do that, I can might as well run, I don't know, I can run the sensor wires back to another node MCU, but that's four wires. It takes two power and then two wires to run the uh, module. So I'm probably going to run this. I picked this up anyway to first some because I was going to run the solar panel up to the roof. So, um, yeah, so what I'm probably going to do is run a test where I can't see where I have it. I already cut a USB cable. Or what I might do is just. Um, well, I could buy a 5 volt power supply and plug it in and run this wire over to where this is going to be. Or I have those little telephone chargers so I can just cut a USB, splice this in, run it over, and plug into the USB port. So my experiment for solar power for any of these modules is kind of uh, dead. So, but this is more reliable. I just got to buy a new power strip because the plugs in my power strip are going the wrong way. So uh, it covers up when I use the little, you know. Anyway, this is going long. I didn't want this to be this long. But that's the two next two modules that are going in. And so the next video I'll have, I'll probably have one complete and show you outside as I hook it up. I might have them both complete. But, um, uh... No. I don't know what that is. I'm getting pop-up messages here. So that's it. This video. That just kind of went downhill. And I will see you in the next one. So have a good week, everybody. Weekend's actually coming up. Tomorrow's Friday. So have a great weekend. I'll be working on these projects and other projects. I have the wall to finish out there. I have new shade cloth to put in. And I've brought two more of the beds up online. With, and I have to go buy some more hydrogen. 
So I'll bring you videos of that coming up as well. So any questions, leave them down below. Comments, please. Um, I like comments. I try to reply to them. Uh, like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. See ya.